exchange for your contribution, we're offering many different rewards, from river trips to lectures. To well, you are the very first to see some of this video we're about to show you, shot by a team on a mission to become the first to paddle the longest river, river in the world, the Amazon, from its newly discovered source. And they achieved that goal last year after spending five months on the water. And here to talk about this incredible accomplishment this morning, and their next challenge is West Hanson. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Good morning. Good morning to you. You survived. Yes, with a lot of help from my friends, as they say. There were a lot of us on the expedition, and the core group was all from Austin. And so you were a, what you call an ultra marathon, or not ultra marathon, uh, yeah, ultra That's right. marathon kayaker, which I didn't even know was a thing. It's a weird subculture, but it's it's quite prevalent in Texas, uh, made more famous by the Texas Water Safari, which is a 50-year canoe and kayak race that goes from San Marcos to the Gulf of Mexico. So how do you decide one day, hey, I think I'm going to paddle down the Amazon River? In 2008, I was invited to be on a team that went down to the Amazon in Peru and raced this 80-mile race. We built our own raft one day and we raced it the next three days. After that, I was hooked. I just knew I had to do the the Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so I started researching it after that. And you told me at first you wanted to do this by yourself. Right, that's correct. No, only seven people had ever paddled the entire distance of the Amazon River, and I wanted to be the first person to ever do it solo. But that changed last year. Uh, I was contacted several months before the expedition by Rocky Contos, who discovered the new headwaters of the Amazon River, to let me know that, hey, we may be going down the wrong river. And so after that, it became a first expedition to paddle down the new head from the new headwaters of the Amazon. And it changed the distance. It certainly did. The Amazon was already somewhat controversially longer than the Nile by a few miles, but this increased that by about 60 or 70 miles, making it you know, for sure the longest river on earth. So your expedition covered 4,200 miles. You thought you'd finish faster than you did. So <laughs> what did you think that you'd be able to accomplish and then what actually happened? Well, in canoe and kayak racing, we can usually cover 100 miles fairly easily within a 24-hour period without much effort. So I, I kind of thought we'd be able to do the same on the Amazon since the water's flowing really well. Well, we weren't used to paddling day in and day out for months on end. and. We ended up averaging about 38 miles a day, so that was a that was quite a revelation to us. And as you're watching this video, you see, you know, you're dressed down like it's hot, and then in some other pictures, you see snow, and you're all bundled up. Um, along the way, you encounter drug traffickers. Yep. I mean, there are a lot of challenges. What are some of the biggest challenges that you guys hit? Well, we started over 14,000 feet in the Andes at the new headwaters at Lago Acucocha, and there were snowstorms. It was freezing. Um, and we had to paddle through ice and these heavy blizzards. And then we got down to the rainforest after 500 miles, and this is a big, what's called the red zone, where cocaine is grown, or coca leaves are grown in order to be processed in the cocaine. And so we were held at gunpoint several times there by suspicious villagers, and then also by the narco traffickers who actually were quite polite after they figured out that we weren't competition to them. And clearly, you caught much of this expedition, or most of it, if not all of it, on camera, where a lot of you guys are all of you wearing like GoPro type, ca type cameras as well? Exactly. We had a variety of cameras. One of the cameras we had from National Geographic was actually stolen in Brazil by some pirates, but we didn't lose much footage there. Other than that, we had, you know, personal cameras, GoPros, and we're throwing it all together into a documentary now. I was going to say, this sounds like a movie just waiting <laughs> to be uh, put together here, and that is the next goal. You've got a Kickstarter campaign and a tight deadline to meet your goal. We have about 10 more days to meet our financial goal in Kickstarter. The name of the documentary is Peeled Faces on the Amazon, and that refers to what the locals in the red zone, the Ashkaninkas, referred to when they First, saw the first Europeans. They thought their faces were peeled. The, the brown skin was peeled off their face to reveal the skull. So pelacara is what mm -hmm. they referred to in Spanish. Peeled faces. And so your goal is about fifty thousand dollars. We have about forty-seven thousand to go. Yeah, check <laughs> so. this morning. You're almost at uh, three thousand. <laughs> That's so, right. So um, people can go on there and donate. And and like we talked about earlier, I mean, making a documentary is is pricey. Oh yeah. And it's time consuming. You can have all the footage in the world, but you need someone to organize it. And fortunately, in Austin, we have a, a, a great professional crowd. We hired uh, Ian Prickrell, who is our editor, and Steve Lewis, who lives across the street from me, as our graphics designer. And they're both helping with the interviews and and turning this into a feature-length film. Well, we wish you luck, and we hope this helps. Thank you, Wes, for coming in this morning. Well, thank you so much, Aaron.